Hello and welcome to the Dan and Sons podcast. I didn't mess up this time. We <laughs> we have our lovely guests because um, I am the host, of course. Um, <laughs> George, we. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi. How you doing? Hi. Hi. Liam Masters. That sounds that sounds good, right? Liam Masters. It's pretty good. I feel like that rolls off the tongue. It's, pretty good. it's like an anime character. Yeah. If I could. Uh, I would like to quote a uh, Capcom USA CEO this week, and I would like to say, Dad and Sons is back! <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what the people are saying. We've got all the boys. <laughs> all the boys. We've got all the boys. All three of us grown boys are grown boys. Are, 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 are alert and present for, for the occasion. Grown adults. Grown dads. Grown daughters. Gr- grown daughters. <laughs> the, the daughters are the top. But that's the thought. <laughs> so, so Matt, you uh, yeah. you missed us last week, where Liam and I spent the first thirty minutes talking about a game called Wargroove that that I'm pretty sure you haven't played. So, so you got to miss that. Oh, th- that's great! I'm glad yeah. I missed last week then. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> um, um, we we also we also did some Devil May Cry. You you, you care about Whoa, Devil May Cry no, at all? No, no, no. This week we're doing Devil May Cry. Yeah. This week. Okay. Fuck okay. Yes. All wait. Both of you guys have played it. Well, uh, I'm I'm going through four because I I never finished four. Oh. I am playing five. You're playing five. Did you beat it? I am uh, mission sixteen. So getting close to the end. These are a couple damn good games. Oh. Guess, my guess, goodness. Guess what, babies? I beat a game. <gasps> Was it Black Jack? Oh. Five, baby. <laughs> oh my God! Really? <laughs> Shit. I thought you were just going to be like, hey guys, I just came back completing my sixth playthrough of, of poker. <laughs> right, because that's what I had I've been playing for. Path of Exile all week again. <laughs> oh, wait, no, Matt, oh, you know what? I did think no. about that. Don't tempt oh. me. Do no. not tempt me. So, do, yeah, ignore that shit. Path of Exile is fucking 2018 Matt's Man. best game. Get rid of that. <laughs> fucking di- Am I going to have to, like, step out for a spoiler cast again <laughs> of, like, week before I Who's play it? Whose fault is that? You literally don't have a job. You could do anything. <laughs> what do you mean I don't have a job? I just <laughs> made the Shadow of this Colossus <laughs> video about job, art George. and the meaning of life <laughs> before writing 3,000 words about remakes and... And writing and editing videos and making the same podcast I'm on right now is my job. I have for, three of them. For the past, like, what, like, th- 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 two months, all I've picked is podcast games. All I've picked is podcast yeah. games. That's the my dedication, George. That's my dedication. <laughs> Where you at, George? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, <laughs> I went through the whole PS4 library <laughs> in a second. <laughs> You actually finished games that both me and George started last year, but actually didn't finish as well. <laughs> it was just me <laughs> ranting and raving about Spider-Man for like three episodes in a row. <laughs> Spider-Man is so good. So how long is Devil May Cry 5 anyway? How many hours should I expect to, to put down on that you one? You know, it's going to be like, it's about 12 to 15. Yeah, it's pretty short. Yeah, okay, okay, that's like three, four days. It's, it's an action. It's a it's a character action game. It's what it is. It's the same as Bayonetta. Bank, uh, Vanquish and you know well, those De- can be great games of the past. Really short and really long. Uh, Revengeance, you can knock Revengeance out in like five, six hours if you know what you're doing. Yeah, you could probably could do this with Devil May Cry Five. Yeah, yeah, you can. Especially if you play on Human, I would say Human is pretty easy. So minus story spoilers, because I mean there really aren't any anyway. Uh, the- Devil May Cry though has like weapon spoilers, mu- music spoilers. You've already seen most of the weapons. Okay, apart so from maybe I've seen two. I've that, seen a GIF. That is on- a spoiler in itself. <laughs> I've seen a GIF. <laughs> Spoiler alert for Devil May Cry 5. I saw a gif on on Twitter of a Simpsons gag involving Homer Simpson and that, like, really tough, gnarly-looking biker dude who I think is is Nelson's dad um, having a sword fight with motorcycles. And underneath it, I saw a gif reply to it of that actually happening in the game. So, I mean... I don't know. It, well, even it like, was you can't look trailer. at this thing without it was, spoiling. It, it was in the trailer. Like everybody knew. All of a sudden, now Dante has two halves of a motorbike that he wields as swords, and it is fucking amazing. Oh, that's cool. 
It's That's so good. neat, I guess. It would have been cool <laughs> if I found that organically on my own in the game, but now I just know that you can slap people with motorcycles. Well, okay. Well, the way he gets the motorcycle is ridiculous, so yes. enjoy that. <laughs> yeah, just enjoy, enjoy that. The whole that. game is freaking ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. I wish it was more ridiculous, to be honest. It, it wasn't quite as ridiculous as I wanted it to be. <laughs> there, were, there were at times where it is so ridiculous. And it, the weird thing is, it's so ridiculous at times, yet it's possibly got the best-looking character models oh, I yes. have ever fucking seen in a video game. Like, Kratos... Eat your heart out because Dante, Nero, and Trish and V and Nico? Lady and Nico. Oh my God! Whatever black magic Capcom are using for the RE engine is like they must be sacrificing to the gods to get that yep. technology. Holy shit! That game is good luck. Oh shit! It's so it's so the, good. It's the same it's engine okay. as Resident Evil. Yeah, it is. It's the RE engine. Yeah, it's it's the RE engine. It's from That's when they switched me. development over to RE seven. Because because everything is on RE. The the, now. the the big feature there is that everything can get a photogrammet photogrammetrically scanned in. Yes. So Capcom have used models, but it's the face like expressions models. too. Yeah, it's in, insane. Everything in Devil May Cry is crazier than real life. Yes, which is why the ridiculousness stands out even more and is fantastic. So it looks so <laughs> realistic. Well, realistic in a cart, um, in a video game way, to the point where you see like some of the demons and the demons look like shit compared. Like it's it's like a yeah a contrast. There. I would. Say it's weird because it mm, looks like CGI Pokemon. <laughs> 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 yes, it looks so good. But, like, art direction-wise, it's pretty one note. Like, crumbled city entwined with ugly, insexual, oozing mass. In Insexual. Oh. Insexual. Mm. It's very one note in terms of its art direction. But in terms of the character models, woo, and the weapons, woo, and the animations, woo! Yeah, I... It, do, can we talk about it now? Or I Quickly, before we talk about it, I would want... Is I do want to... I, I want to make a quick clarification from something I said last week. Mm -hmm. I said last week that I felt that Bayonetta 2 had better combat than all of the Devil May Cry series. Mm -hmm. I would like to just quickly say Bayonetta 2 did have the best character action combat until I played Dante in Devil May Cry 5. Dante is the only reason to play this freaking game. Nero sucks. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> Nero... See... I Nero loved it. Sucks, Nero is okay. Dude. Nero is okay. I don't like V. V is V is interesting. I enjoy playing V in short a uh, short burst. So I yeah. always pick Dante when it comes down to ch picking a character. So, you can kind yeah. of pick characters. Like I I wouldn't choose V to play if I had a choice. Even though okay. it does look cool. Yeah. You know, because it just you're like mashing two buttons at the same time. Like it just feels weird. Yeah. But you have to like put the, the controller well, down, in case, in hold case the bird button, know. and then do the shadow button a couple times to do combos. And it's just <laughs> yeah. weird, man. In case anybody doesn't know, like Devil May Cry 4 had two characters. Now they have three characters. The three characters being Nero. Yeah, that's in the trailer. Kind of, yeah. 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 If you've seen the trailer, you'll know. Like, Nero is kind of the main character, and then there's this new character called V, and then we have Dante, atypically being Dante, but he's fucking amazing. Um, and they all have very, very, very playstyles. Like, even more so than four. Like, Nero and Dante play different from each other, but were a lot more similar than they are now. Like, Nero's, like, robotic arm switchouts can be really fucking cool. And the stuff you can do once you start getting really technical with it, yeah. like uh, using like the time stopping bubble making one and shit, <laughs> like this is crazy stuff you can do. There's a time stopping bubble making gun. Yes. Okay. No, that like arm, robotic arm. Oh, think, oh think, even better. Think Devil Snake, cursed snake from Metal Gear Solid Five, whatever his name is, Venom Snake. I can't remember. Um, yeah, yeah, Venom. That was that was. Think, the, think his robotic arm, but like, but cooler. I, I got, I got a question about coolness and and bubbles and and the story. Before you guys get into the, like the needed the nitty gritty spoiler uh, 
talk. Um, you, we're, we're talking about it being crazy and, and people pulling motorcycles out and slapping each other's nips with them. Um, yeah. and, and the thing that, that I'm noticing with four is that four seems to be coming about in a period of history where, where mm-hmm. that whole crew, the, 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 the Kamiya boys didn't quite know how tongue in cheek they were supposed to be with this stuff. Four has had me giggling every now and then, but I'm still surprised at how seriously it, it takes its own um story lore sometimes like there'll be series that eh, there'll be cut scenes that's just a series of villains plotting with one another for like th- three to six minutes at a time really really long scenes of just back and forth villain planning and it's all there's no jokes and punchlines into a lot of it and then when the bayonetta games start coming out there's just like the visual comedy and 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 gags thrown about all over the place and now it sounds like devil may cry is is bumping that even up to a level further from that and that that at this point they know they they know how funny Uh, and ridiculous this should be i mean don't expect uh bayonetta levels jokes (laughs) yeah (laughs) don't expect jokes but expect one-liners it's not like that all the time okay yeah because because going back from bayonetta to devil may cry is is funny on on a couple levels one is how despite the reputation and the collective memory of these games it's a lot it does take itself a lot more seriously than i remembered and it's also a lot less mobile than i remember like they really want you to wait until the last minute to dodge attack so you can look the coolest possible whereas in bayonetta you're always mashing the the dodge button there's 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 two very different play styles well, at hand what is cool about devil may cry is the sense that you always have different ways to avoid attacks and stuff like that there yeah. is unique ways between all three characters in which they can dodge. It's not like Bayonetta where, you know, it's all about timing and then you get rewarded for it. Yeah. In Devil May Cry, it's literally just you have more options about how you dodge things. That's like the little things that I like about V because like when you dodge out with V, like one of his like uh, shadows would carry him to the side. Carry and him to safety. Like yeah. it, it's just so automatic the way V works and it's... It's cool to that's look why at. I don't, but that's why I don't like it, because it feels I, like yeah. you're taking one of the best character action games, like the guys who have nailed the player feeling so good, and then in like on paper, the idea of having like a really vulnerable character who can't fight for himself and has to have other things kind of fight for him, and you're kind of like giving commands to them to do it, it takes too much away from the player and is just like very automatic. For the most part. Well, it's like, for killing them, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's the coolest part of V. Like, the finishing, mm. like, that feels really satisfying. But, like, the the panther just never fucking appears where I want it to appear. Yeah. Like, what are you doing over there? Like, I'm locked on to this other, like, enemy over there. Wait, please, like, <laughs> go attack him. It's fucking, it's really annoying. So, I don't know how they did it in, 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 in 5, but in 4... The safest place to be is in the air. Oh yeah, but that that that's DMC staple, man. See how yeah. there are there are secret missions inside of Five that task you with trying to stay in the air, staying in the air for fifteen minutes, <laughs> <laughs> like jump canceling your way it's more to victory. Seconds, but yeah, yeah. I remember a, a platforming challenge where there was some kind of shiny hidden item across a gap, and I couldn't make it with my jump, so I just started shooting my gun in the middle of the air, and that allowed me to like clear the jump. Oh man, the I will admit there are little sections of this game where you have to do a bit of platforming and a bit of like jump timing or like double jumping and the camera just mm-hmm. does not fucking like it. Yeah, that's that's it the worst like it of, of four. I don't know if anyone remembers yeah. the torture chamber room, but fuck that torture chamber room. It doesn't get much better in five. The camera is kind of like, ah, not that great. Oh. But the spaces are a lot more open. How, how far did you get? In, in five? Yeah. Oh. So far? Yeah. I'm like two missions after the 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 bike. Oh man, you're not even in there yet. Okay. Dude, I'm, <laughs> I'm like 16 missions in. Yeah, I mean you're getting close. You're getting close. It's just there's certain things I can't say, like because yeah, uh, yeah, you're yeah. talking about platforming and stuff, and I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> just oh. you wait. <laughs> oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe I don't have to leave. The, the thing sucks. is, like, I, all right, I want to I want to say something, and I don't want to get hate for it. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> But, take take the heat off me for once. Yeah, yeah, I'll take the heat. I think, I think, 
games, the bar for games have been lowered. Because when I looked up the reviews after playing this game, they were getting nines, and I'm like, nines and tens. And I'm like, uh, I don't I don't know about that. <laughs> because, I, because, like, I, I not this, I feel like, okay, what they did is went back to the roots, and they did that great. And, but, like, the game is not necessarily, like, amazing, though. Like, I don't want to say anything about how it ends, but, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's a climactic, but, you know, like, it's just, I don't know. Like, Dante, if Dante wasn't there, I wonder if it would have got the same review scores. Mm. Because I feel like Dante is, like, the main reason to play that game. What if they changed his hair? Because his voice I, acting, everything, like, everything is better. The boss fights, everything is better with Dante. Yeah. I, Being able to switch through four play styles? Like, all I All these really, weapons and swords and stuff like that? Mm, Who cares mm. about Nero? Nero? Who yeah, cares about him? Really, Who cares about It's me? really strange because, like, I really started to like Nero's combat. And I got really annoyed in the fr- in the beginning of the game when I'd have to switch to V and I'd be forced to play missions as V. And yeah. I was like, just give me Nero back. And I hadn't got a chance to play Dante. And then as soon as I got a chance to play Dante, I was like, never Never let Never me play again. another character. Never. Like, it's so different. Like, the amount of options and, like, it's kind of, like, really good for the lore because Dante, even in his title on the screen, is Legendary Devil Hunter, whereas Nero's is just Devil Hunter. Yeah. Poor little sod. You know, but it kind of just shows that over the years, Dante has gained all of this knowledge and be- has become this just m- machine of death. But, man, like, being able to, like, fucking fuck shit up with like rebellion and and feel it you feel it oh like you you fucking shit up and then like jump in there change to like the balrog fist and like fucking muhammad ali your way to victory (laughs) and like fucking change that into the royal guard stance and then have like giant enemies come and swiping at you and like deflecting every block and then just fucking punching them into space oh it's so good it's so, Dante in this game is the best character action has ever felt in a video game, bar none. I think it 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 beats Bayonetta, and I still think Bayonetta two is probably a better game overall. Mm. But man, Dante in Devil May Cry five is like peak peak action. It's fucking brilliant. I say playing this game if you've played all the other ones i've played all the other ones i don't remember them much but i played all the other ones i'm not yeah much of a huge fan of action games so i'll say that there like i will play the random one that makes me feel like two action figures smashing together as uh the best friends say like that shit is fun but i um I'm not going to go out of my way to play. I wanted to play this one because I've seen all these like little Twitter posts of V and everything like dancing around and, <laughs> and killing <laughs> monsters. And I'm like, all right, this might be cool. A lot of people are liking this. So I, I tried that instead of like Metro, which <laughs> Metro is kind of more my thing because I really like Metro. Yeah. But like that's next week's podcast. I, 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 I don't I don't know, like unless you really love action games or you really have a tie to like the series i don't know if i'll be like yeah go and get this you're gonna enjoy every minute of it because you're gonna <laughs> and you have to be okay with the cheese because it's the the story is it's a so mess. much cheese it's, it's a so mess and it's cheese. one-liner <laughs> one-liners it's... and it's like the, it's not the type of cheese that's like elegant cheese that's been you know in a nice warehouse you know getting but nice it's and aged it's... it's like that spray can <laughs> cheese you know what i'm saying like it's... oh but you gotta admit it's delivered well though it's like spray can cheese on a very fine china plate yeah it's yeah. like like when yeah. nero like sticks his sword in the ground he's like i'm sorry dante I'm begging this bitch, and he like revs up his sword and shit. It's like, oh my god, this is so mm. cool. <laughs> Revving up the sore—that's that's that's something that that I wasn't expecting, and I've been giggling. Well, there you like, go. Like a happy child go. about. I don't know how to use that mechanic. Do you? <laughs> do you know, see? I'm not me using that mechanic. I don't fucking know how to do it either. I do it. It's like, brrr, brrr, and it I'm feels like, is good. It doing anything? Is it doing anything? You don't know. Sounds need it, good. But it feels good. <laughs> Like, it's still beat the game just fine. And I, I rode rockets, you know, with punchline. Oh, man. Like, you can ride you can ride your own arm. Like, that's cool. Like, there's so lots cool. of little cool things. There's, you could, like, like, have, a, like, a giant beam with one of these other uh, little hand modules. Like, it's it's fun. 
it's is it like the best game ever and you should go ahead and grab it i don't i can't recommend it like that i don't know not to say this is like a really recommending section and that's what we do but yeah it's weird because it's the most i don't know about you matt but to me after playing like god of war and uh spider-man and all those big triple triple a titles that are sort of bridging that gap between the cinematic experience like even red dead and stuff like that this is the most gamey game i've played in ages like this is a game where you walk down a very thin corridor and then all of a sudden you're in a big circle and you're Mm. like i know what's happening here and then all of a sudden the animation happens and all the walls block off and enemies just come out the floor and you're like this is a video game but it's a damn good solid video game i i didn't like all the cutscenes. it's like let me let me just play (laughs) oh you see for me me they're like they're on par with the action like that's just how good the characters look and every time nico would like was on the screen Oh yeah, dude! I, I like, told you, I was like, I'm gonna play this game for Nico, and I, I was like, like <laughs> see, every time you call her, she just like busts out. Like they didn't have to animate that, but weird. they made her come in. Like you didn't even have to press X on the call booth, but they did a whole scene. Everything, everything every was time. different each time every they time. did it. Every it's time, so good. and that in itself deserves like an extra point, like on our Metacritic. Like it's just so I like, good. I, I, I don't want to spoil it, but when Nico meets Dante, is like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's 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 such a fun game to play. Yeah, like apart from like the camera being a bit of a dick sometimes it's like not frustrating in any way like and if you're not good at character action games this is like the most forgiving devil may cry so far because it's it's so easy easy you get golden orbs like i had like 15 golden orbs by the end i think i I used them maybe twice straight up extra lives Yeah. yeah yeah but in the middle of a fight so you can just continue on. And it gives you full health and full charge for everything. It literally mm. is such a cheat. Go- Golden Souls, $2 at the microtransaction store. Oh, wait, they don't have one of those. They do. Oh. They do. Wait, what? They do? They do. You can buy red orbs for real money. <laughs> they do have microtransactions. Okay. Why? Why? Well, I don't know. Do you get okay. so many red orbs? though? Like, you know... Okay, you know what? You do get a lot of red orbs. Yeah. And also, some of the upgrades are just like, why am I buying this? Another another good thing I'm going to say is that this game, when you said this is a video, very video gamey game, it is. Yeah. In the terms of, like, it you is. know that feeling where you, oh, there's something um, under that uh, waterfall, right? There's something around yeah. the corner. They give yeah. you something every single every time, time you explore. <laughs> yeah. Every single time. There's not, like, one time. Maybe there was one time that, where they made a joke and they made the ground red to make it look like there was something and it wasn't there. And that's, like, yeah. only one time where they screwed with somebody. Oh, like, man. Yeah, like, like it's, it's, it's every single time there's always a red orb around yeah. the corner, around the staircase, around the elevator, every single time. And I loved it's it so for funny. it. It doesn't it's matter so if it gives you only, like, a thousand orbs or whatever. Like, it still was good. Every time there is a phone booth where you can call Nico to customize stuff, yeah, you're like, well, I know what's the, I know the section that's coming after immediately after this yeah, because it only ever appears <laughs> before a boss fight. fight. <laughs> you're just like, oh, this is such a video game. It's so it's like every PS2 layout for a video game ever made. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one way. Like it's so like basic when it comes down to that. It's so <laughs> it's so big, and I it's, like, I, it's I, like the best McDonald's you've ever had. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if like people, people might think like, oh, they they did it on purpose or no. I think I think this is the way they make games. <laughs> I don't think they're like, like, well, there's some type of science behind. I know, it. I, I know. I think they're the, just old fashioned, and they just yeah. made the game look good. Well, <laughs> this is the, the thing. The director, like. the director of the of the game is Itsunosan, and he is kind of known as a what is called as a chunin, which is kind of like a a bit of a like a bit of a man baby mm. kind of like he's obsessed with toys he's, he's obsessed with like models and stuff and he, he wants like devil may cry to be whatever teenagers think is cool so dante wielding two halves of a motorbike is <laughs> yeah 
<laughs> it's like, yeah, a teenager would find that cool. So everything that is cheesy about teenagers liking stuff like leather jackets and robot arms. To be fair, that's cool anyway, in no matter how old you are. Like that everything in this game is that. Yeah. 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 George. Uh, yeah. Get on it. Hi, I'm I'm on it. Seven dollars <laughs> uh Redbox. Redbox is my friend, dude. They should really start paying me. <laughs> I need that sponsor. George's friend as well. I think that can lean us into George. Uh I I I I have been playing something not like me, and and I was able I know, to do right? it not through. I was through, yeah, I was hella surprised. Not What's through Redbox, but through GameFly, I rented oh, Pokemon. Gamefly. Let's go Pikachu. What the fuck? Well, I mean, <laughs> for fifteen dollars a month for for an opportunity to just sample some trash, it's it seems worth it. I can't even imagine that like I, it, you sitting down no you're mm -hmm. you're on you have it on the tv don't you you're playing Pokemon yeah, yeah, on the no, TV. And I, got, I got quite a few <laughs> twists actually for this one okay. um at first it's 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 not me playing pokemon on the go on my new nintendo switch it was me playing pokemon at home on right. on, on the tv with the dumbass motion controls uh. that really are incredibly finicky and hard to figure out what they want out of me oh pokemon's perfect what are you talking so about? so when you hit um i'm ready in your in your contextual in-game menu that determines the calibration point for what angles you want to be flinging your controller with so you line your 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 joy con up to point the tv before you get into the throwing challenge and then press i'm ready and then try to like smoothly draw your semicircle motion from there, and it's it, it it was a whole big thing that required looking guides up outside of the game, which is weird. But okay, point is also it's actually my girlfriend playing through the game and not me. Oh. How frustrated You're is not she with it. the controls? She, no, no, she's having a blast, but that all comes with the caveat that she is 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 not as experienced a gamer but is coming into this from the cell phone game the way it's meant to be played eh eh you're not playing it though george you can't can't no that's not the way it works but this is the way it's meant to be played this is this is a pokemon game for for babbies and, and cell phone casuals so so i feel like I feel like I'm I'm just uh, uh, throwing the game into its natural habitat here, and it's it's fun to watch and fun to giggle through. And my God, Pokemon is even darker than usual because they, in 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 the Go games, I guess that's what we'll be calling them now. Um, they just exist to be harvested. Yeah, like they, like do. they get ground up into candy by the hundreds. <laughs> where are all these Pokemon coming from, and where do they go? Because this is this is not this cannot be ethical, guys. It cannot be ethical. How many of these wild animals they want you to catch, yank them from their homes, and then somehow, some way, turn them into candy after you send them to the professor? What's the professor doing? Yum. Do yum. the Pokemon like this? He's uh quote researching them. George. Did they agree to be ground into candy? Ah! <laughs> so... That's gross. Yeah, I remember you guys talking about this and how wacky it is to try to wrap your head around the concept of you getting the bulk of your experience points from catching Pokemon instead of fighting Pokemon. And and I also... I, I don't know how... I mean, I guess you would have gotten this deep into it eventually, but we just found out about the uh, catch combo mechanics. <laughs> where yep. if you catch multiples of the same type, you gain more XP. So that means that if you happen to be born as a Zubat, fuck you! <laughs> You are getting ground into the, the machinery of this banal evil that is seeing the entire population of Zubats in Moon Cave exterminated for the candy and the XP. I... How... 
How much life and happiness is Candy and XP gonna give to the world in comparison to one healthy young Zubat boy? What? what, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're really going deep on this. See, the thing, I mean, Pokemon's always been fucked from day one, before before you even get into the Go games where you're grinding them into candy. I, 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 I've always questioned how, how legit it might be if the Pokemon want to be fighting each other, like how seriously these injuries that, that the kids throw them through it or for, but this, this just crosses a line. And me and Leo have no words. I had the, well. I, I mean, I went through this game last year, and I I grew to like it. But my main frustration wasn't the fact that I was harvesting the souls of every <laughs> Pokemon in existence. It was more to do with the actual physical controls hurting my hands. So did you? It's eventually, nice to know which of our priorities are in order, George. Did you eventually switch over from from motion controls to the the portable mode where you just yes, hold a button and it's easier? Terrible! The but, controls but, are so bad. But 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 then you get less XP. They reward you for putting up with the shittier motion controls by giving you XP bonuses for for having the patience. Mm -hmm. It's 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 hilarious, and yeah, I don't I don't know if it's like you know a, a, a bad game per se. It, it it's seems not a like game. Pokemon's it's not a there. Game. There's just some really weird XP leveling mechanics that are gonna take you a while to wrap your head around. Especially no, they, if if they, you they make entire sense for the people it's aimed at. It's all based on Pokemon Go's way of. Leveling up Pokemon and also catching them. It, oh, it, it makes entire sense. It took a while to get it through. We had to look up how, how the catch combo works because there's not a lot of in game tutorialing going on, which is something that ah, incredibly frustrates me. I mean, I, it seems like it makes more sense if you have to look up how how per stat level scaling works in Dark Souls on a Wikipedia. But in Pokemon, we had to look up a guide on what to do to get her Pokemon Go cell phone game synced to the, the full game when there are options in the menu screen that supposedly walk you through the process but don't tell you where to go on your phone. There's a, there's a lack of text in this game, and in, in this game's menus, that... Th that on top of the conceptual weirdness of grinding hundreds upon hundreds of common Pokemon into candy after catching them consecutively in a row for combo. That just, it, it just, it's just weird to wrap one's head around the processes and what they are supposed to represent to formulate a logical order of Wait, cause and effect in your brain. I've never played the game, so you're, you're saying that you grind Pokemon up into candy? <laughs> It's like using the verb farm to, to click on resource. I don't know if they're being literally ground, but that's 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 uh, an exaggerated <laughs> imagery of the where process. Your mind goes. Oh, I'm just catching all of these Pokemon. I'm a ten year old child. I'm gonna send them to a professor to harvest them, to oh grind my. them into the machine. If anything, harvesting is a more accurate word that is no less creepy. Because you are on a menu full of Pokemon <clears throat> that you put check marks next to. And then you press two buttons and a bunch of candy shows up in your inventory and the Pokemon go away. What else could be happening? I, I it, it's the exchange rate. You're, you're selling them as slaves, which is probably not any better. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you do get candies for them. Also, so. I guess your Pokemon team, it's not, it's not like they're getting paid for that shit. Oh, no. <laughs> Caterpie, I choose you. All right, now I'm going to pay you your your injury bonus for the Gyarados snapping you in half before you go back in the ball. Oh, sorry, your insurance policy ran out. You're going to get turned into candy. <laughs> there, there, there is a, a manga like that. The Pokemon do get hurt. <laughs> what do it's they really get gross. for it? What do the Pokemon get out of no, the they deal? they just die. They just die. No! <laughs> Is that what happens to uh to to your rival's Ratatat when you go to Lavender Town and find him grieving at the Pokey Graves? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just like turns over to you and is like, "I fought my Ratatat to death." That P the reason why uh, Ash is like friends with that uh, professor is they keep bringing Pikachu back to life. 
That's why Pikachu is always at level one at the start of every season. <laughs> why is Pikachu not angrier about this? Not not dead? <laughs> why is Pikachu always such a happy, cheerful little scamp when when Pikachu should be really pissed off about about getting thrown in, in the grinder so many times and and not getting fairly paid for it? It's love. Ugh. That makes it even worse, because that means it's an abusive relationship. Ash doesn't need Misty. He has his Pikachu. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Guys, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu is a really dark and scary game, and it makes my brain go to, to bad places. Well, it's a good thing you're not playing it, then, and the lady friend is. <laughs> You, you can't be trusted to control such power. I can just so, imagine you sitting on the couch and you're just complaining, complaining as she's playing. She's trying to play the game. She's yeah. just trying to play the game. Like, ah. she, she's trying. <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys know there's a co-op mode? <laughs> Having had George in my apartment playing games with me, I can imagine just yeah. the pain she's going through. <laughs> Of him backseat playing, <laughs> describing how terrible <laughs> the game <laughs> is. <laughs> You're playing a terrible <laughs> game. You're playing a terrible, terrible game. Can't Keep you play? Don't you feel some sim Don't you feel like a sympathy for, for uh, and guilt for all of the Pokemon you're harvesting? It's <laughs> like George. Can I not enjoy this game? There's also a co-op mode, so I can play as a little boy running through the woods with her, except my little boy can run in circles and get in the way of everything. Wow. And when you play the co-op mode, you have a tag team battle on your side of the Pokemon battle, whereas the enemies, they are always all alone and, like... It's always just like so sad looking. There, there was a um a, a Raichu from from the Electric Gym Leaders team who was just like looking at the two of us. <laughs> this Raichu was up against a Pikachu and and an Onyx, and it just looked so scared and terrified. And me and her just mashing the A button and hammering out moves. And there's nothing that they. I don't think there's there's much of a mechanic in there helping the NPC battlers out. It's always a two v one against them. Oh, Pokemon Jesus Let's Go Christ. Pikachu is like the horror game of the year. Everyone, I recommend great great for couples. Nice, Ex excellent, just yep. excellent. Yep. Um, Can I talk about another good game that I've been playing briefly? <laughs> is it yeah, Spider Man? I guess. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> That's cool, I guess. <laughs> well, I was... Because I couldn't play Devil May Cry 5 on my lunchtimes at work, I was I was browsing around for, like, a kind of quick quick play, jump in, can play for, like, either 10 minutes or an hour or whatever, like, at work while eating a, a good sandwich. And I finally decided to take the plunge on Slay the Spire. What? Slay the Spire? Do either of you know what this game is? No, I'm looking it up it right now. A long time ago. A long okay. time ago. Yeah, it was a game that was in early access, and now it's 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 just come out of early access, like maybe two weeks ago or so. But it's like one of the highest rated games on Steam. It is a roguelike deck building uh, card yeah. game. <clears throat> so it's right up my street, um, where you pick. Uh, like a starting loc not location but a starting but it's, it's almost like a choose your own adventure game you choose like a point to start at and then you follow up this tower or this this map and you pick different points on this map for what you're gonna do either you like you face an enemy or you can uh, go to a merchant uh, depending on what path you're on or you can like rest at a uh, like a, a hearth and re regain some health or upgrade your cards or you, you could come across like mini like choose your own adventure parts where random stuff will happen to you like bandits will try and steal your gold and you can part of your way out of it or you have to fight them or you end up drunk in a coliseum fighting a giant bear or something and then if you don't fight back you lose and it's a roguelike so if you die you have to start again but for every time you beat an enemy 
you can you get you get a card you get a new card to add to your deck and when you're fighting enemies you can use as many cards in your hand as possible and you have energy and it it works so well it's so finely tuned and brilliant because all of the cards have been designed like with such incredible synergy the idea of it that they can all combo together and it's just so Moorish like you'll go through it and you'll die at a boss and you'll be like fuck it I gotta go again and it's been consuming my lunch times it's, it's pretty brilliant it's a, a very good idea for a video game mm. although I will say kind of like the art is like yeah. really bad yeah I'm looking at it like, the art put me off, like, I was going to wait for the Switch version, because there's a Switch version coming, and of course, everything should be on the Switch, but <laughs> I put, I was mostly put off for a while, because the art is, like, kind of, kind of terror bad. Yeah. I, 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 I feel bad saying that, because the game itself, like, you know, nothing skin deep. The actual game underneath is, like, really good. Like, really, really good. But it does look a bit ass. Yeah. You should play Slay the Spire. It's great. It's great. <laughs> I I've been playing it all of this week and last week, and I'm <clears throat> and every lunchtime, I just immediately, as soon as like one minute into lunchtime, I boot that shit up and play it for uh, the whole time. It's it's so much fun, and once you like start unlocking some of the characters in it and unlocking their play styles and the different cards you can get with them, and then the sort of power cards that you can get that just like fucks. Everybody shut up. It's so good. It's so good. Very good idea for a game. Is it free? <laughs> no, but like when it, it was in like early access. Game. When it was oh. in early access, it, it was like <laughs> 15 bucks and then it's gone up. Now it's in full release. It's gone to like 25. Mm. It's totally worth it though. I've already sank like 8 hours into it. And in a microtransaction store that allows you to buy packs? Uh no. Oh, no, okay. I might check no, this out. No, the, the, no the, cards, the cards are, like, set. So in the beginning of every character, you get the same cards, and then the cards that get added to your deck are the ones you get randomly after beating oh. an enemy. So what happens is when you beat an enemy, three cards will appear, and you will get to choose one of them. But every time you die, the further you get, the more cards become unlocked f for you to potentially get through a run. So I think there's like okay. 230 or so cards in the game, but I've only unlocked maybe 100 of them so far. So <clears throat> there's like some cards appearing now that I haven't seen before that mm -hmm. I can play with, and it's really good. And the the, the playstyles of each of the three different characters is so different and so varied. It's really cool. Good game. Well, there you go. Cool. I might cool. want to try that out, actually. Yeah, man. If you, well, we know how I feel about roguelikes. And it's not as it's not procedurally generated, but it is like uh, like you see the patterns and like some enemies appear and you can tell like they have like things they do every time they just appear in random places, so it's not so bad. And like you you start to figure out what cards are good, like what cards you want to take, like when they appear in front of you, like which card is going to be better than the others. It, it happens pretty quick and it clicks with you, and you get like relics and stuff that you that then become like a part of your character and they passively affect you and you just build up you're starting from zero every time and you just build up to being like this beast and then face off against bigger beasts i've only ever made it to the third tower once it's really good you should play it slay the spire slay the spire i probably will buy it on switch as well <laughs> Speaking of three syllable words that begin with spy, they're man. What the fuck? Wow, what's happened to me? What's happened to my segue skills? That was like, I need to turn in my gun and my badge after that one. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Is it Spider Man? Yeah, Spider Man <laughs> just came out in Japan, right, it Liam? Did. You were raving it about it on Twitter. It was it did. the first day of like, the rest of your it life. It was only okay, right? It was like only okay. No, yeah. no. It, it sounded no, like you were no, crying no, while you were tweeting no, that. No, like, 
there are movies, right? I, I said like on Twitter, like there are movies that are hyped up, right? And yeah. you can you can't even imagine, right? Like you guys saw it and it was hyped, but now I've had to sit with like all no, of you guys I having it. had it George for months. didn't like it. Wait, I liked it. What are you talking about? I saw it. I thought Matt I can Andrew tell when saw George it. doesn't like something or he thinks something is overhyped, and he definitely thinks that way. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I. That, yep, there it is. Uh, go ahead, Liam. Go ahead. It was a fun movie. It's a fun movie, right? But it like it. It's a. Uh, why won't you allow me to like things? <laughs> I think that's you and your lizard brain not allowing them, George. Unless it has historical... Yeah, historical. Like, that's the thing. These things all, <laughs> all get bonus points if they fold into your weird preferences. And I imagine if you like Spider-Man, this was cool as shit. The following segment lightly spoils Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Spoiler time. I don't like Spider-Man. I don't like Spider-Man. There's references to all sorts of spider trivia. Yeah, which is cute. And I, I liked it because they weren't like, oh, here, what is it? Like 2033 Spider-Man, like the really weird one, and like Venom, and like, you know, all the atypical Spider-Man stuff that gets thrown in. Like, oh, it's a reference to... Uh, uh, the, like the, in, the Brooklyn Bridge in, shots from the Sam Raimi movie. I recognize that spider see, trivia. That's, see, that shit is cute. That is cute. That stuff is cute. Oh, the uh, after the credit scene too. Did you stick around for that? Uh, maybe. They uh, make fun of the spoilers. old '70s Spider-Man cartoon. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah. Spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should spoil yeah. that. And he's, yeah, he's like, you know, I've got a really cool theme song. He's like, dan dan Spider-Man. It's like Spider-Man. It's so fun. It's it's really cute, and it references a lot of Spider-Man history without being stupid with it. And like having like Nicolas Cage be like Spider Noir, like fucking. It's so funny. It's, it's and it's such a heartfelt, genuinely good movie. Yeah. Let alone before you even start talking about it being literally the most ridiculously animated film of all time that yeah. isn't a anime. Yeah. Like not like a hand drawn piece of like Akira or Redline or something like that. It's weird. But like seeing CG styles come into their own. Like this and the Lego movie don't look like how my brain typically understands 3D CG stuff. I think it's because stuff. art direction. It isn't yes. just like making a bunch of character models in CGI and then like just animating they them. Are, it's like are. having an art direction and knowing w what to do with it. Mm -hmm. it. It seems like a different philosophy from, from Pixar animation, which is also great, but everything looks plasticky like a toy in Pixar. In the Lego mm. movie, everything looks plasticky like a toy very, very deliberately in a way that like looks I like mean, an yeah. actual stop motion thing. And this, it looks like cells of, of concept. They also do weird things with the frame rate too. Did you notice that? Yeah, no, yeah. This, yeah, yeah. Like everything in this film is like, expertly detailed like an incredibly thought out that's where the you know the direction comes from that puts it above all others it's like oh we have this crazy technology in this way we can do animating but they don't just go over the top of it it's like everything is like finely tuned to be in its right place and like it's so clever it's so clever in regards to that yeah it's still like a kids movie like the story is kind yeah. of like predictable and whatever it's great but Everything else that comes with it is so good. Probably the best kids mo kid movie I've seen in a while. Yeah, kids Man, movies are Being a, you're getting being a better. kid and seeing that movie, like, I don't even was, know. Like, yeah, it was blow someone's mind. It, you, fuck yeah, man. Cartoons like, got, wow. got super good, like, mid-2000s when, when, when Flapjack and Chowder were, were hitting the scene. And now, now kids movies are just like, I think... I think it's kind of because there's so much criticism pointed towards uh, the old Campbellian methods of storytelling. Like, the predictable kid story plot of a hero's journey is something everyone, every kid can spot now, so they gotta get creative. And you see, like, well, weird really... postmodern, self-aware meta-narratives in kids' movies like Spider-Man. That's really cool to see happening. Yeah, and it's, it's never too out of place and there's not something that feels unfleshed out in any way like even when you have all of the the different spideys from the different universes come it's like okay let's do this one more time and they quickly breeze through it and you're like yeah that i i get it like i get who that character is now and everything and it, the way they play on 
they don't even like explain like multidimensional shit. Like they don't have to. They just like spell it out completely and clear for anybody who's watching. <laughs> Spider Man dies like fifteen minutes into the Spider Man movie, and the <laughs> kids are like, supposed to yeah. just roll with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's great. Like just like and some of the like it's not like laugh out loud funny, but sometimes the jokes are just like. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I don't know. I thought yeah. I thought Spider was Ham good. was 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 a cute little jokester. Yeah. For me, it was it was it was oh, noir Spider. Yeah, yeah. Who, who like With crunches Rubik's up the, the the lighters or something? When he when he has like the Rubik's cube and he's like, "Is this green? <laughs> is this purple?" He's like, "I don't understand it because <laughs> everything to him is in black and white." <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so funny. ridiculous. He's, when that happens, he's like. It was such a shock. I was just like, oh, okay. This is where this is going. This movie was good until yeah. here. And then it just worked. And I was just like, oh, okay. I, I, I'm okay it's, with this, oh. I guess. It's the weirdest and thing. Just, like, miserable Parker as well. Like, spy, uh, Peter B. Parker is so good. He, yeah. He's, like, it, yeah. It's like, that was my course, favorite. My favorite after, like, Spider-Boy. After, 15 years of being Spider-Man, you'd be fucking, like... It'd be the same as anything, like a, an embittened game developer. You're just fucking miserable. <laughs> of course you would be. It's so good. Yeah, there are movies that are hyped to Spider fuck, and then schlub. you like watch them, and you're like, yeah, I get it. I get like what people are going for. But this was like, I knew it was going to be good, but it was so much better and than I thought it was going to be. Um, won an Oscar for good reason. The, the the movie clips YouTube account has clips of the final fight scene so I can refresh myself of how trippy as fuck that was. Yeah, man. What Ugh, the, there's, man. there's like globs of, of color floating through the sky forming the platforms they're fighting on. It's, it's video game as fuck. And Miles is such a genuinely really likable character. He's yeah. not frustrating. Even at times when you're like, come on, Miles, you can fucking just sort your shit out. Like, it's not frustrating in any way. It's like very deeply understandable, like at times. Where you're like, well, yeah, of course. Of course he's not going to do that. Or something. He's super likable. Hey. <laughs> I just love that yeah. scene. Hey, <laughs> that meme is like great. <laughs> Wait till you see the uh, official fart joke redubs. Okay, okay. The the YouTube poop is, is coming in. No, already. there's there's some bloopers that that have been released of the voice actors having having fun with it. Anyways, um, <clears throat> it's yeah, good. it's good. I, if you haven't seen it and you live in Japan and you listen to this, it's out now and you should fucking go watch no. it because <laughs> that shit's going to be... I somehow avoided spoilers, but... Not exactly like, safe like than sorry. revolutionary um, 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 praise here. Everyone and their mother has is, is been been liking this movie and I guess... Man, I don't... I don't... I don't want this film to turn out to be one of those where it is like liked by everyone that eventually in a year's time people were like right ah, and that's such like a catch 22 isn't it I was about to be yeah. like I remember when you guys were introducing you're like well George didn't like it and I just I I just don't know if it's like our generation's moon landing or anything but it seems like everything that's good <laughs> wow. gets so ridiculously oh. overhyped that it's hard to avoid that that comparison <laughs> Like for, for like Cry anything, really? yeah, and I'm sure Devil May Cry Five is great. It's fine. It's good fun. But but is it gonna end the Cold War? Maybe I no. don't know. No, it's not. <laughs> it's... I feel like culturally, though, Spider Man uh, into the Spidey Verse will have a lot more of a, an effect than Devil May Cry Five will. <laughs> is it the television event of of the millennium? I think it's kind of like the Toy Story of right now. Remember how just like how Toy Story changed a lot yeah. of things, like in terms of animation and also kids' movies and how animation is taken seriously. We've just seen that Spider uh, Into the Spider Verse won an Oscar. Like that, th th I wouldn't underestimate just how much this might have an effect on like the next couple of like animated movies and also kids' movies in general. Hopefully good because there's always been like kids mo media in general does not give enough attention given to it which always struck me as really weird because you show your fucking kids this stuff you better pay attention to um 
Yeah, yeah it's weird to me because I, it's kind of underappreciated. Like, I, I love cartoons. Like, I always have. I, and in recent times, we've had stuff like Adventure Time come out and, like, the regular show. And obviously, SpongeBob has lasted the depths of time. And, like, if you generally watch them, you can see they come from, like, people who are incredibly passionate. Like, OK Go as well. But they're massively underappreciated, I think. They are as video games were in the past, I think. A lot of Thought. responses that I got on a negative review of um, Minecraft Story Mode were people just being like, eh, whatever, it's some stupid bullshit for the kids. But you don't want to give kids stupid bullshit because then, then they might... Th that's their basis for comparison. Their formative experience, their first impressions of media should not be stupid bullshit. That's gonna... Gonna... Grew up in the golden age of Cartoon Network. Like, I have an appreciation for cartoons that will die Yo. when I do. The Scooby-Doo yeah. like, series from from the new millennium is so much better. I, I, I don't remember if it was like 2008 or 2009. It's so much better than every other iteration of Scooby-Doo. And who the fuck mm. would have ever expected Scooby-Doo to ever be good? Like, that's, that's proof that cartoons are getting okay. When I'm when I'm feeling fucking apathetic and I don't want to do anything, I just I just watch SpongeBob. Man. <laughs> I just, I just fucking yeah. watch SpongeBob. Love it. SpongeBob, baby. <laughs> I can imagine Miles putting his hand on Gwen, saying SpongeBob, baby. <laughs> SpongeBob, baby. <laughs> hey, SpongeBob, baby. <laughs> so thanks for thanks for showing up to the 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 super SpongeBob dad and man in. Podcast. Into the wow. into the pineapple verse. Uh, we're here to talk about <laughs> cartoons and 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 SpongeBob and uh, children's m movie because we are adults, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what you do now as an adult. You get really well, passionate. You gotta about take your sons somewhere. Children. We gotta give advice to the real dads about uh, the way to take their real sons. Not that either of us three would know anything about. Well, that. now we know to take your kid to Spider Verse or play Pokemon Go. We should just review children's cartoons all day. Yeah. yeah. I don't know about Pokemon Go. It might teach kids to grind up their family pets into candy. <laughs> That's not normal. No, man, it's not. Quiz time. Quiz time. Quiz time. Hello, and welcome back to Dad and Sons. Today we have some bad news. Some really bad news. What really? Uh, really? Wait, I, I'm, one, I'm looking through the list here. Uh, <laughs> it, it's either like okay news or... Someone died. <laughs> no, no one died. I don't think... Yeah, in fact, come to think of it, even the stuff that's not on the docket is pretty cool. Like, did you guys hear Halo uh, just got announced? Yeah. The Master Chief <gasps> Collection is coming to PC. The best the best Halo is coming back, but Halo what? Reach. That seems okay. so interesting. So what, modders are going to be coming back for Halo? Or does yeah. modding still exist? Maybe. I feel like they don't, I don't exist anymore. It depends. <gasps> <laughs> so I haven't heard a modding Reach. thing in such a long time. Am I just like out of the loop? Is that what it is? Yeah, I think, I think you're out of the loop. Well, also modding in general is not as much a thing as it used to as be. As it used to be, because they used to be lit. It used to be crazy before. Yeah, now, now, it's just now like, I don't you. Know if that's true. We throw. just saw like a Resident Evil Two mod where Thomas the Tank Engine yeah. replaces oh, that was so Mr. Funny. Hanks. <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> There's loads of good mods out there for sure. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Choo choo, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, the scariest thing. That's way scarier than Mr. X. That's so much scarier. <laughs> Can you imagine so, if that's the way it was in the game? Oh, 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 oh my uh, dude. God, um, I, I, I haven't seen like. It, in, like in front of my face, but I hope that they play the. Da, 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 yeah, they, okay. Da, da, I'm sure that there's going to be a mod for the Halo Master Chief Collection that was just announced for PC that might replace the Pillar of Autumn or something with Thomas the Tank, or maybe the little Halo <laughs> ring extending up your skybox can just be one really, really long Thomas the Tank folding all the way across the sky. Oh, or, that would be or maybe, so good. I don't know. Every bullet that you shoot out is a little Thomas just, the Tank. Just 
Thomas wrapping around Someone the sky. On it. Every texture replaced with Thomas the tank. That's the important part of the news of, of, of Microsoft waving their arms up in the air and be like, okay, fine. You get all the just cool wanna, Xbox stuff, fine, here, you can have it. I just want to mention how happy, as someone who isn't the biggest sh shooter fan, and has... Uh, I've played a fair bit of Halo, but the Halo Reach, and the, the single player is fantastic, and the Halo Reach multiplayer is truly some of my fondest memories from when I was in university. I adore that game. Halo that's, Reach? That's the one where you had jetpacks, right? Halo Reach, I adore it. It was a time. It was like a time and place thing. I I know it's probably not better than like Halo Three or no. something like that. But it was like it was like a time and place thing. And for me, like combined with like how impactful that single player can be, it's really good storytelling at times. And that final mission, woof, oh boy. Halo is the final mission. Like it's always the set. You do you do final mission with your friends on legendary. That's how you beat Halo. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> ba -ba -ba. I'm sorry, George. That's how you beat Halo. There's no <laughs> other way to play Halo. No other way. <laughs> no Halo other <Reach>. way. <laughs> swap multiplayer. So swap swap multiplayer on Fox, Halo Reach. Final destination. It'll, it'll, it'll be, be that's quite similar. <laughs> it'll be a relief to have have the campaign the campaigns on. But one thing that's weirding me out about this announcement is that Halo has like come and gone from PC throughout the years. Mm -hmm. The multiplayer version of Halo Five and the Forge mode, <laughs> I, I believe, did get like a flat out minor budget discounted release on Windows 10. Uh, I was playing a bunch of El Dorito last year, which was the uh, fan-made re-release of the Russian release of Halo 3's multiplayer mode on PC. Yeah, basically, <laughs> Halo 1, 2, and 3 have been, and 5, have been on PC in some form or some way before. And now, yeah. now I guess you get them all as like one package as an official real release from I hope, from Microsoft I hope, instead of modders. Yeah, I hope this package is a lot. I mean, it's so enticing because this package, by like on paper, is a fucking great package. And I did literally buy an Xbox One for it back oh, in no. when it came out. Uh -huh. But man. Was this game a fucking mess when it yeah, came out? It didn't that's, even that's work. That's the catch. It's, it didn't even work. Will, will you so, be able to get into your matches, or will you be waiting yeah, in the matchmaking God, screen forever? It was forever? awful. It was so bad. It, they, and it just was bad forever. Like, it stayed bad for so long on Xbox One. They just... Like, I remember, like, the Halo 2 maps, they just... I don't think they ever fixed it. It was just so bad. Um, they, they have confirmed that you got to make a free Xbox Live account to be able to play, but... I, Can I just have my old Xbox Live account on on Steam. I actually maybe uh, that that password wow. might be able to. to Xbox are really over. like sort Still of pouring themselves out recently with the rumors of like the Switch Game Pass and like now this being like I guess it's on Windows anyway, but now being on Steam, like it's on Steam. I feel like that's a thing in itself. Like it's it's coming to Steam and not like through like the Windows proprietary store or something mm -hmm. which was it's coming to Steam which is really unique what they what they didn't do with the uh, Halo 5 PC stuff yeah and i guess like they didn't even no they didn't go to epic either it. and it's like oh look epic we can make a load of money together kind of thing that mm, intriguing anyway so anyways what, is it? what, is, what um, else more more interesting news are uh, rumored announcements for a Google console. There were some images being passed around that, that, that many of us, including yours truly, thought was, was a real thing, but were actually fan renders based off of patents that Google filed for a controller that looks like a basic video game console controller, except a with... A terrible controller. Android buttons. <laughs> A terrible, terrible <laughs> controller that it looks anybody terribly who's even unexciting. Who's no? Uh. It's a terrible, terrible controller that anybody who's ever played a video game would not want to play with. It yeah. looks like a plasticky piece of knockoff bullshit. But what looks like terrible? What's what's explicitly beyond the pale with uh, the shape, with these renders? Already, like the triggers, the way it doesn't curl at the top. Uh, is ergonomically terrible for your hands. I can I can the hear the buttons. Click. Those are for uh, alien. That's an alien. 
the buttons are like completely flat. Yeah. And like the the handles like curve in, kind of like the steam. Look controller. how small the sticks are, though. Look how small they are. Yeah, but well, I I guess okay. <laughs> point is, to me, it looks like a basic video game controller, but with something slightly off. And I guess to you guys, it just looks like a basic video game controller, but everything's wrong. Those sticks are kind of like they they look worst like versions of the N sixty four stick. <laughs> they look like nipples. It looks like the controller has nipples. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, the, this render is 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 bad, man. It's okay, so bad. Like, anyways, the render turns out it's so bad. It was, it was, like I'm looking at it again now. It's like if someone like basically drew buttons on a piece of bread. The the renders based on a patent based off of well, a, yeah, actual real patent. But the rumors, the renders are also based off of rumors that are passing around that uh, Google's going to be revealing a game console at GDC. Also bolstered up by a teaser video they just posted today on uh, Tuesday the 13th, date of recording, um, in which they say, gather around as we unveil Google's vision for the future of gaming at GDC. They just wrapped up the Project Stream um beta where they were distributing streamable versions of Assassin's Creed Odyssey that more or less looked fine and ran fine for, for streaming. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Google announce a little tiny set-top box for streaming, maybe one that might have the hardware for the streaming inside the controller themselves if they want to tether that thing to a wire. Uh, it seems likely, it seems like, like, I don't know, I'm crossing my fingers and, and betting that this, this might end up happening next week when, when I'm in California. Well, it will be, it's the 19th. It's like they made this controller for, like, someone with long, skinny fingers. Like, salad fingers. So, <laughs> like, they made it for the guy with salad fingers. You seen salad the fingers, controller is just like fan made render. It's not likely to be the real thing, but I'm guessing whatever. You say like... that. You say that. I'm guessing it'll look yeah. like the real thing, but won't be the real thing. Like remember the the boomerang controller from the PS3 announcement? That didn't that go was anywhere. A pro that was a real prototype, though. <laughs> so that's worse than the Google fan made render mock up based off of a patent based mm, off of rumors. Yeah, I hope. What's the I microphone hope. button for, I wonder? T talking to your friends? Push to talk? I don't know. So so you also got a, a options button, seems clearly labeled a home button. I wonder what that's gonna do versus the uh, the Google button in the middle. Other than that, and the microphone button, it looks like basic, double pronged. I don't want an Android Dual console. Stick. I don't want an Android console. Why not? Oh, mm -hmm. wait. You mean you didn't want an Ouya? No. No, I never wanted an Ouya. You can get a Raspberry Pi and do whatever the hell you want with it. Why would I want this? What if that Android console comes with the option to stream real games at a discounted rate? Is the house a lag, though? Mm, yeah, see, I guess that's what we will have to find out. Uh, how much do you think you'd be willing to pay if uh, the Android console was able to stream real 50 games? Bucks. It is 50 bucks for the hardware or 50 bucks for... If it's, if it's like, just streaming, right? It's like streaming bots, right? right? Kind of right. like a Steam link yeah. type of thing? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, mm. 50, 50 bucks. 50 bucks Maybe less then... than 100, I would say. And then for a good what about, controller, not a crappy What about the cost of the games? I I better get a pack of free games. I'll tell you that. Okay, so you want a pack of free games with your fifty dollars? Well, it's a streaming uh, service, though. So yeah, whatever games I guess come that with work. it can't be good if they're not getting, or it can't be that fancy if they're not being streamed. So they might be like actual Android games. Your fifty dollar Android console might come with 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 Fruit Ninja and Candy Crush, nope. and then you have to hook it up to the internet to to stream Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Fifty dollars. I'm not I'm not paying a bunch of money for. It. I'll wait. I think I think you're driving a hard bargain. How about you, Liam? What what do you want out of a out of a Google console? What are you willing to 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 buy, buy not into? An, not an oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Just not that. Just, that. <clears throat> Just don't do that. Don't like Matt said. Don't want an Android oh, based don't want device. Don't don't need it. Wait, isn't got my phone? Is the Switch 
an Android based device? iOS. Yeah, it's based. I think it's based on the architecture of the iOS. O- okay, uh, not I iOS, think the OS. Thing is, Android with me, devices. I could care less about what DNA the operating system comes from. The, the, yeah, the no, we're talking about like the, the games. We're talking about the approach, right? The important like, thing yeah. with the video game console is the game library, and Google has. Um, it's also rumor that they're deeply partnering with Ubisoft for uh, the first two, two t- first few titles they're going to be revealing for this thing, and that partnership would make sense, seeing as how AC Odyssey was the game they used to stress their streaming, streaming services. They also recently hired Jade Raymond on as, as a Google VP. The Which is an former, incredible hire. Yeah, former designer at Ubisoft who came up with Assassin's Creed in the first place. And head of EA Motive. And- so the prediction is that there will be more fancy games than just... Just Android fluff. They Does, also have. Do you remember? His, do you remember Phil Harrison? Oh, oh, I. He's been at everything. Sony, Xbox, everything. Yeah, Phil Harrison's been there for like. Phil Harrison's been there for like what? Three, four years now. It's quietly whittling away at something. And I think Yves Germont, yeah, yeah, the CEO of Ubisoft was dropping some controversial quotes about a year and a half ago. About how they see streaming as being in the future of the. Oh my God, God! I think oh, oh, the the strings all over my bulletin board here, putting together a very easy <laughs> prediction that this might actually be a thing. <laughs> Next week at GDC, we'll. F- okay, <laughs> but thing is, I I, I want to say I wouldn't go higher than like seventy five dollars if there's not a lot of meat inside the box. It's going to depend on how much meat's in that box. How, how much uh, graphical processing is going to be happening in the box itself versus through the streaming service? Because I don't want them passing costs on. I, to it, could, it could be anything. Like Google have more money than all three. Uh, they, they probably have more money than Microsoft at this point. So like, they could they could afford to sell it at a huge heavy loss. They, they could just, this could just be like a solid like home console that has traditional first party games on it, like a Nintendo console. We just don't know yet. Mm. If that's the case, if there's like, uh, let's say like like PS3 level graphic processing in there for offline games, I guess I'd bump my buy in up to like a hundred twenty. If, if it's a last-gen console that can stream current-gen games, presumably forever into the future, which doesn't sound like a great permanent way to play games, but I've always, I've always championed them as a option, as a lower-priced option for being able to buy your way into the current glut of good games at $120 if you don't... If you're like a poor kid coming from a poor family... Who who does not have the options to to pay up for the real thing? I think one twenty might be like the ceiling they're looking at. One twenty with with last gen guts in it. Otherwise, they're going to start competing with the regular consoles, and the streaming a streaming option on those is never going to be the the superior optimal option. Well, it's only a matter of time. I'm excited. The, the new challenger competition. Has arisen. Breaking <laughs> up the monopolies, which is not that inspiring if a giant umbrella conglomerate corpse doing it anyway. But still, yeah, you're pretty good. If, if they try and fail, how much worse can the world get? Not that much. Still got my Nintendo Switch. You yeah. know, the end gauge, it came and went, but the world didn't get worse off for it. On Live came and went, and and we got better streaming services out of it. The Ouya came and went. Oof. <laughs> and uh, nothing of value was lost nor gained, and that's the, the, game the beauty stick of it. came and went. Do you remember the game stick? Steak is in ribeye? Game stick. Game stick. It was oh, a controller. Man, I was getting the... hungry for a second. <laughs> no, the game stick. It was like a. It was a yeah, one of the like Android based controllers, kind of like the Ouya that had like a a USB stick that was in the controller that you took out and then plugged into your TV. Mm-hmm. It was uh, and it had one of the the worst controllers ever. Hmm, maybe that's Possibly what worst. they'll try doing with Google. 
possibly worse than the Google mock-up. Can we just call it the Googler? The, the Gooba. <laughs> the, the Google. <laughs> I'm just like imagining the GDC press announcement and Steve Google gets on the stage and is saying, Here at Google, we're proud to announce our latest initiative in bringing our brand into innovative new technology strategies with the Google Goober. <laughs> Oh my god. Alright, well, the Google Goober, I guess that's going to be the name of this podcast. Next news story is about, you know, yeah, it's about the transformative nature of, of, of loss and how new things are born from destruction. It's about electronic arts. Mm. EA did something that you actually are in favor of. Uh, EA is skipping their E3 press conference this year. I, I don't know if I'm straight in favor so much as... Nobody wants I'm to just, hear about sports for an hour. I've seen E3 press conferences by Electronic Arts, and there will be 10 to 12 minutes of, of announcements and montage of games that aren't sports, and then there will be 30 to 40 minutes of sports. Sports and, and the games with that are, are talked about are just like boring. Yeah, Sport like, and Steve, Sports Two K Nineteen, coming to oh, a sports station near you. It's, it's As Assassin's Creed uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019. It's the same shit. They're they're almost a sports franchise. A few years ago. Um, EA Play is going to be their their video and demo series running from June seventh to June 9th where where E three itself will be a few blocks down the street as usual and mm. they also just are flat out not doing a press conference. Um, similar to Sony who announced back in November that they were not doing a press conference, presumably because the big games they have to highlight this year are stuff that was still announced last year. Um, but this also does follow up Nintendo not doing press conferences anymore for a few years now since they started the Direct series. I think that there is more to do with the generalized trend of E3 press conferences going away as E3 becomes more of a public show rather than a insider industry event for... Uh, for, for journalists covering the industry who now do that on the internet at home instead of in trade shows out in the world. Well, E3 is becoming more public. You don't have to have giant conferences when you can pretty much just do what you want, like Nintendo do now, and everybody can just tune in on Twitch. I can't wait and, for uh, a virtual E3. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's put where on, it's going. You could put on your little your PSVR and be there <laughs> in a 3D rendered E3 room with a whole bunch of avatars sitting there looking at some guy on stage with with fully immersive smell tubes bringing you, you the odors. You could pay for the seat as well, like for front seats, you have to pay for a bigger dollar. <laughs> Uh, uh, water bladders in your chair emulate the feeling of the room's humidity and how sticky your clothes get. Ugh. Okay, so yeah, um, <laughs> humidity and smell is 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 something about E3 that I, I believe has, has sort of turned me off in recent years. Thing is, I think this is gonna mean that if I don't if I don't go next year, I it, the dream might be kind of done. E3 is gonna stay, but. The romanticism of E3, the hyping of E3, the press conferences and, and the big announcements centered around E3 seem like they are steadily running away to distribute themselves more evenly throughout the year. And when I was growing up, E3 was like game journalism rite of passage. And now when I was when I was getting into game journalism, E3 was an annoyance that people complained about regarding its long waiting times, how expensive travel and lodging gets around that area around that time of year, how um, you can wait in line for, for a 10 minute demo that you might not even get to play throughout that entire day, how patronizing and overproduced and just plain dumb so many of these press conference shows are. And now I just, I feel like a part of my soul is going to be lost if I don't do it eventually. Because when I was a kid, it was such 
such an important part of growing up was going to your first you E3. You don't even like E3, though. I know, because I would probably hate waiting in line all day. Yeah, that... Yeah, Gamescom was was a lot of waiting in line. Yeah, Gamescom. Yeah, yeah, game, game, yeah. Unless you have a media pass, Gamescom is literally hell on earth. Gamescom <laughs> was full of people that I could not walk around that were in the way of stuff I wanted to do, and I got some good interviews done. But I didn't play the the big like the one demo I waited in line for at Gamescom was Star Wars Battlefront Two, and oh. yeah, I had. <laughs> Nothing to say oh. that I wanted to say at the end of that. I I, I was able to secure a, a demo session of, of Skyrim VR, which didn't. This has been a depressing episode for George. Yeah. Oh my god. How is Doesn't not like that Man? depressing? Grinding Pokemon. What? I like Spy. Ah. Mm hmm. I say good riddance. I don't need to hear EA E3. I I don't need to see uh. Yeah, I mean, at this another point, it's anthem so that, of them killing another. That, scene. <laughs> they've always been like pretty rough. I mean, it is mostly sports, but man, last year is like the whole. Uh, what was it like the the sit down? Like they would literally just like sit down on chairs and have developers talk on end about shit. Really? And it was oh. so boring. Mm, Sony had the uh, church fiasco as well, where they couldn't get people out of the the tent for one trailer. Fast enough we to get in the tent for the next trailer. <laughs> we had to wait on stream because real life people couldn't shuffle fast enough. E3 is getting too big and cumbersome to be sustainable for this shit. And I, I feel like like I, I lost it. I missed it. I missed my opportunity to en enjoy A, E3 during the golden years and B, E3 at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never yeah. went. And I'm, that's gone. That's definitely gone. Well, it's not going to be the same. If only we were born five years earlier. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Bit Summit. That's where you need to come. It, it, it's, most people want to see trailers anyway, so what's the point of have renting out like a whole place and just to show trailers? Right. Like, In fact, that's one point. thing that always struck me as like so wasteful about the event in general was the whole point of it is to get commercials out in the world and you don't got to go to L.A. for that. And people are like, oh, Sony won because they showed the most game trailers. Like, I, 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 what's the point of E3 then? I guess it's cool having a 6% a, uh, chance of being able to take a picture with your shoulder over Miyamoto or Kojima or someone. But I don't know if that 6% chance is worth worth the cost. Yeah, I don't know if a lot of, a lot of what you got to put up with is worth the cost. Yeah. And and alas, the the opportunity to either reap those benefits or put up with that bullshit has flown us by. So um, I guess we'll never have the good nor the bad. Uh to further depress us, uh, I want to say um um my heart goes out to all the ArenaNet people who lost their jobs at ArenaNet. Yeah, true and, that. Uh, cuz yeah. we had Josh Foreman. Um was it this podcast or no, I think it was I was TOBG. TOBG. Josh is Josh is great. Yeah, yeah, Josh is great. Just you know, heart goes out to everyone there, including Josh. Just he listens to the podcast, so hope he uh, gets himself a, a nice little tasty job because he's a talented guy. Poor yeah. maybe pour one out. For I think the he, I think he's like doing his own. Pre he like he's working on his own like uh, interactive story or something. Yeah, uh, yeah looks really does, cool. He does the models he posts on Twitter. He did a Shadow Colossus, man. <laughs> Top yeah, of man. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But yeah, talented. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. I'm sure those those guys will land on their feet somewhere. So let's uh, let's let's pour one out for the layoffs, and uh, and, g and give them good ideas to steal. Right, right. I got Here. water, so. <laughs> Let's pour out water onto the sidewalk. That seems even worse than malt liquor somehow. Malt like, like water liquor. is a precious resource that, that it is. everything it, needs it means to live. More. No it one. Means more. <laughs> well, I guess a, a handful of, of people out there. Do you know the there, differences probably. between my life and your lives? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can think of is a that few, I, but. Is that if I was outside pouring a beer on the pavement, I wouldn't be arrested? Oh my god. 
<laughs> so I can pull one out for all the arena net homies. Yeah, you, you got space in your apartment for like somebody, right? So I'm just gonna fly over there. Gonna... Hey Matt, you're welcome anytime, baby. Yeah, ooh, ooh, you heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> You, shit, it's not like a like a voice degree. You heard it here first. <laughs> a selection of game ideas that laid off Matt's, game developers. Matt shows up. Can you what the fuck to, are you uh, doing here, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> you told me on the podcast. Holy dude, shit, that Matt, was, that was for the bad. podcast. I don't love you in real life. <laughs> taking <laughs> invitations way too damn seriously. Let's talk about not taking these serious. game submissions too seriously. The game submissions. That then is serious business from, from Dad Den. It's the GDC. It's the G D and S C, the Game Dad and Sons Conference. The G G D S C. No, the G C D D S C Game Developers Dad and Sons Conference. Yeah, featuring the Google Google. <laughs> <laughs> like how you're typing it out. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm, just, I'm, 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 I'm getting myself organized on here so I can go through just an F new submission. Oh my god, this, this, this submission here. What is this? I, I, I didn't have a lot of time to organize it because I'm a lot busier than you guys think I am. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, Matt, I thought the same, but it is worth. It is worth. Yeah, I saw one. the name, so I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe George, maybe maybe <clears throat> just <this> yes. One. <laughs> okay, yeah. let me let me let me get in character of, of Justin F here. This is when I read through this dad in submission. This is what I imagined Justin F looking and talking like. <laughs> Oh god, we're gonna get sued. Are your game nights filled with sweaty tryhards that don't shower? With that new demo that you wanted to Danny? try, does it have a is stupid fixed limitation to get massive attention? Don't have the space in your living space for another gaming platform? <laughs> well, do we have the product for you? Dad and Sons the board game! <laughs> <laughs> dad and Sons the board game. I like how they put a little trademark symbol right, right after Dad and Sons. Dad and Sons like trademark. Own it. <laughs> dad and Sons trademark the board game is a rich, mystifying experience in which three players go on an epic quest of self-discovery and routine insanity. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta catch my breath and switch back to normal Embody mode. Embody the avatars oh, of never George, mind. Matt, and Leo. We're passing it off. As you traverse an RPG session's length of dangers across 20 distinct levels. Each level involves the dad triumphant <laughs> having to accomplish a specific goal. Bracket. Find an item on the map, bring it back to the base in time for the podcast, podcast this week, slash level. Close bracket. <laughs> While <laughs> utilizing their superpowers and avoiding the hazards that attack each dad's unique weaknesses. Uh, clarification, we have no weaknesses. <laughs> well, for, for the sake of the game pretending that we do, um, George Dad uh, some, uh, yeah. has abilities in which I consume garbage that would otherwise bury <laughs> Liam and Matt under its weight. <laughs> While at the same time, George Dad is weak to the over-commodification of valuable human experiences in art, but only within a range of five <laughs> meters. These traits make George Dad a well-balanced dad package that can sniff out valuable information otherwise overlooked by most. <laughs> oh, Matt, do you want to read yours? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Matt, read yours. <laughs> Matt Dad has micro abilities that make him a multifunctional character to play as. <laughs> <laughs> he has guaranteed passive sound qualities in rooms <laughs> and internet <laughs> latency <laughs> problems <laughs> that would otherwise destroy the voice quality of other dads. <laughs> and, and Matt Dad's extraordinary knack for humor allows the for creative solutions others would not often consider P P me pony 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 oh, pony. oh that's how it's <laughs> remember <about>. that garb <laughs> age it's your fucking joke <laughs> <laughs> that's not how it's that's not how i spelt it <laughs> I, it was p-o and then n-e sorry k-n-e-e -E. pony <laughs> it's Oh, and he, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But Matt Dad uh, suffers a strong sense of long gone cynicism, <laughs> leaving him weak to modernize game what? design techniques that make game qualities average for everyone instead of for 
of good for some. If Matt Dad is exposed to a pickup of his type, uh, he will almost undoubtedly be filled with disappointment and frustration slowly, slowing his movement. <laughs> There's there's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, that wow. is that is that's a wow. mouthful. You you have wow. You, you're a versatile character class, Matt. <laughs> no, that's you apparently. <laughs> my, oh my god, George, you you're the round you're the round type. You're the you're the all rounder. Yeah, Matt Matt is like the 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 technician. Hmm. Hmm. Liam Dad is a unique specialization class. We'll just call it the weeb class. <laughs> Don't try to in deny all... it. Fuck, you are more weeb than me, weeb man. You live in Japan and play a game called Bang Girls. I'm also playing Devil May Cry 5, mister. I'll play <laughs> historical accuracies. <laughs> Creed. Anyway, in which all things Japanese or Nintendo-based become easier or more efficient <laughs> in the hands of Liam Dad instead of his other compatriots. This does leave Liam Dad open to a well-known setback, though. He cannot enter the VR zone. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot have a larger inventory of gaming entertainment systems, leaving him to be a seemingly underutilized dad class. <laughs> However, most neglect to unleash his ultimate power... Bracket, no, not being a weeb, close bracket. Industry wisdom. No. Liam Dad's extensive history working in games allows him to have the precognition perspective <laughs> George Dad and Matt Dad do not have. Oh. <laughs> Take that. I like how my special ability is eating garbage. It's, yeah. And, and everyone else's it's actually beautiful. has, like, skills. And your 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 over commodification of valuable human experiences in art is so it's so funny. <laughs> Funding for Dad and Son's trademark the board game would require a measly fifty thousand dollars to create the units that would sell at fifty dollars a box. Expansion packs are in the plans with the hopes that this could turn into a video game at some point with procedurally generated levels just for Liam Dad because he loves them so much. And early access buyers at an at ten dollars extra would be guaranteed a limited edition shipment of dad socks. <gasps> he put the trademarks on them. I can't sell dad socks now. I think he did it for <laughs> us. Oh, ours. Yeah. Okay. That that'll be our defense in case something happens. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but he can have like five hundred thousand dollars for this. Oh yeah. I want to see this. Yeah. Yeah. I see this come to light. In fact, I'm just gonna give can him get- all my money. Can we can we get can we can we give him George's Patreon money to prototype a box? Yeah, my my so. savings, my mortgage, my four hundred one. Yeah, nice. I'm, I'm my I'm Obamacare. <laughs> well, that's pretty much useless now, anyway. <laughs> Stop, George! <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> how 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 did you know that? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very, very much for that. Uh, Justin F., a.k.a. Incredible typer. submission. Was this the first board game we've had as a submission as yeah, well? Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it's, uh, are you guys happy with your the embodied avatars? Yes. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I'm a weeb. Matt cannot stand modernized game design and George you eat garbage. Right, I right. Mean, and dude, now it's, cool. it's, pre- it's, pre- it's pretty it's pretty correct. <laughs> what does that mean for Devil May Cry? Cuz Devil May Cry is technically old, right? We just literally talked about the fact that it's a gamey game and it takes tropes from old PS2 games. It's definitely not like a modernized game design. Right. Tim Rogers got in a lot of trouble for naming his video about it Devil May Cry is the king of garbage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that like the the review bombing that these fans do if, if if something about Devil May Cry is something they think is wrong is insane. The internet is a powerful tool out of control. I, I don't know how you can blindly blindly just love something regardless if it's like something yeah. you grew up with. Like I can't yeah, just, I don't think I don't blindly love yeah. Pokemon. Like, I grew up with it. Like, I bought the cards. I love pizza, but <laughs> pizza sometimes makes me sick. Like, everything's up for criticism. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter if 
Liam doesn't like Odyssey. If you enjoyed Odyssey, <laughs> then that's fine. <laughs> like I don't understand. Even yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter that George eats garbage. Yeah, we love him. The real garbage are the friends we made along the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We can set them aside next to your Obamacare.